let's begin the process by talking about polygons in general. Now, if you've done any sort of 3D modeling in the past or in other applications, then you're probably familiar with polygons. Maybe you can skip ahead a couple of lessons. For those of you who are new to 3D uh, in general, as well as new to uh, coming into Modo, let's talk a little bit about polygons because Modo is a polygonal slash subdivision surface modeler. So it's going to be able to, uh, you're going to be able to create subdivision surfaces, which are really tied very closely to polygons. So let's talk about polygons first, and then we'll move into talking about uh, subdivision surfaces. So here I have a, uh, a piece of geometry, just a simple cube, and this is a, a polygon object. So a polygon object is made up of three different types of components. You've got your vertices, which can be accessed right up here at the top. We're working in a tabbed layout here. In the model view, you can access vertices here or by hitting one on your keyboard, and then you're able to come in and select those. Those are simply points in 3D space, so a set of coordinates in our 3D space here inside of Modo. Now those different points are connected via edges, which we can access with two on our keyboard, or I can just select them through here, and that's simply a line between these two points. And the points themselves don't have any mass or size, they're simply points in space and they're connected by the edges. The part of the model that we really see are these polygons or faces. So we can access those by hitting three, or coming in here and selecting polygons. That's the actual part of the geometry that we can see. Now, maybe you get an idea here, if we wanted to change the shape of this cube, really the only places where we can change the shape are places where there are edges or points. So for instance, if I wanted to round this off, the only place that I can change this shape would be here at the point. And so, you know, I can take this point and move it down, but you can see that the lines between these points stay completely straight because there are no other points between those. So in order to get nice smooth shapes, normally you would need to add more polygons, right? So we could take this polygon, we could add more polygons. So if I hit the D key, that not only adds more polygons, but also kind of smooths out the shape. So you can see where we had one polygon, one quad polygon, which is a four-sided polygon on the top. Now we have four of those. And so now at this point, I have a little bit more control over the shape. So I can come in here and select these points, select a point down here and move it around. I have a bit more control because I have more polygons, okay? And so as we start to work here in Modo, the idea will be to create enough polygons for us to be able to control the shape that we want to get, but we don't want to have too many polygons that will make things too complicated and also slow down our uh, comp computing of the scene. So it's all kind of a, a balancing act between that. Now there are different kinds of polygon faces, and these sometimes you refer to them as faces, sometimes polygons, you'll see both of those. Um, and it's really just the visible part. Now the, the uh, you can see that these are made of four edges that define this particular polygon. The lowest number of edges that a polygon can consist of is three, okay? Because if you have two edges, you don't really have any sort of area there. So a triangle would be the base component of a polygon. If we go ahead and take a look at this item here, you can see it's made up of triangular polygons. So if I select a particular polygon, I'm selecting a triangle. That's the, the lowest number of edges that can define a, uh, a polygon face. Now a lot of times when we're working with subdivision modeling, we'll tend to stay with quad geometry because it subdivides cleanly and it's more predictable. Um, it's just kind of a standard throughout. Okay. Now you will have some models that may have triangles, uh, but mostly you'll stay with quads and we'll try to normally stay away from something called n-gons. And that's basically anything, any polygon face that has more than four sides. So here we've got a triangle. We had a quads here, one, two, three, four. If we look at this one, which is n-gon, you can see the top of this cylinder is defined by all of these edges coming around. And the nice thing is it's pretty round and smooth. That's the, you know, one of the ways that we can get something round here with polygons is to just add more of them. The The bad part is that this is an ingon up here on the top. And just as a matter of kind of workflow, you know, some people will use these. Most of the time you're gonna hear that you need to stay away from ingons just because of the, the pinching and artifacts that can occur when we're going, doing things like um, subdividing and smoothing and you know going in and deforming with animation and things like that 
normally you're going to stay away from things like this, especially in models that are going to be deforming. You know, in something that's going to be completely static, there's probably a little bit more leeway there. Um, depending on your pipeline and your studio, you can check on that. But for the most part, ingons are going to be something that you want to stay away from. Quads and triangles, you can use those. Quads are going to be probably more preferred, especially for things are going to be deforming and animating. So just something to be aware of as you're going through this process. So there are a lot of tools that will enable us to work with polygons and subdivision surfaces. And one of the nice things about this type of geometry is you can really get specific about adding detail in certain areas. Um, and so we could come in here and we could you know, bevel these faces and just add specific detail right in this area without affecting anywhere else on the model. Okay, so that's a, one of the great things about working like this. And Moto is just a really great modeler all around. You're going to find there's a lot of great tools for uh, building our subdivision models as we go through this process. So we can extrude and, and bevel out um, the faces like this. Okay, and over here on the model tab, you can see the, the toolbox here. We've got a lot of different sections over here on the side. So based on whether you've got polygons or edges or vertices, you can come in and access different tools. We can access edge loop or uh, I'm sorry, add loop and come in and, and add loops in here. So that's another way to work. Adding edges versus extruding out faces. So a lot of different ways that we can start to manipulate and add geometry. And we'll look at many of those tools and methods as we go through this process. So right now we're still kind of looking at our model as a polygon, but really, you know, you'll be working back and forth with looking at this as a polygon and also a subdivision surface here in Modo. There's a really fast and easy way to kind of toggle back and forth. Um, and then you can decide how that's actually calculated and whether it's the same in your viewport versus the render and so forth.